Oh man. This is way higher than I thought it was going to be. 34.62. Jeez. All right, so some people want to know if 5G cellular signals are unhealthy to have in their house and specifically related to 5G home internet. If you have one of these gateways uh, from AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, and you know you want to know, hey, is this actually um, okay to sleep by or have in your living room? I'm going to do some testing here. I'm also going to compare it to the FCC guidelines for how much of this RF signal you should have in your house. And I'm going to measure that right here and show you the data with this. I'm going to do a couple very interesting things with it. One of them is testing it um, as they sit right here or actually adding an external antenna. So this will be an interesting test if, you know, taking that 5G modem and the antenna and putting it out in uh, your attic or outside, does that actually affect the signals in your house that the FCC considers to be unhealthy or abnormal. Now I'm not really going to wear this hat this entire time because um, that's just for fun but this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. I do encourage you to hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more like it. I have tons of really cool content to watch. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this little device. I'm going to do a couple things too because I want to let you look at my Wi-Fi signal. I have nine different Wi-Fi access points, which is abnormal. I understand that. But if you have like a two or three piece Wi-Fi mesh system in your house, you might have a lot of Wi-Fi signal in there as well. So this can measure that. And I'm going to uh, compare that for these 5G or like a cell phone. And that's going to help us understand just how sensitive these things are. Okay, so now to start this test, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a speed test on my phone. Now, on my phone, I'm hooked up to the Wi-Fi right, my, right now in my house, which, funny enough, eventually goes up to a gateway up in my third floor uh, loft. But I'm going to go ahead and test. I'm going to see here what this um, device measures. So I'm going to look at the RF power, and that's in um, milliwatts per centimeter cubed. And I can see what I want to do is hold it close to it. And the closer you get, the worse it is. You know, you get further away, um, it gets better. And obviously when it beeps at you, it's because it's high. So it looks like I'm getting about 1.3 um, was about the highest. Let's see if it gives me a peak. Um, it does show a peak of 4. I, I didn't ever see it hit that. But um, supposedly a peak of up to 4. Now that was on Wi-Fi. Now I'm going to flip this off and use my cell phone data. And what's interesting with the cell phone data is that the amount of power the phone puts out, it varies based off the signal. So actually when you have lower cell signal, it uses up more power. So you can see it actually just started beeping at me um, without uh, me even testing. But let me go ahead and do a test here. And... So when it's upload, it's definitely going up higher. So now it's like 38, 47, 41, and it's staying there, 46, 46. So from what I'm seeing, just anecdotally, without looking at the data on my computer, I'm seeing three to four times higher when I'm using cellular data than my Wi-Fi data on my phone. That's not very scientific, obviously, but that's just a first demonstration here of showing you now what's really cool about this device. I can actually plug it into my computer, I can grab those graphs, and I can um, look at the data in more detail, details if I want to. Now, one thing I will say is the FCC dictates what is a safe level. There's a lot of controversy about that, quite frankly. Um, there's some papers, I'll, I'll link them. These are all either scholarly papers or federal um, you know, FCC or other papers that talk about these types of signals and what kind of biological harm they can or cannot do in general you know this is you know my take on it is if you're not close to them you're probably not going to have a problem but there are some things to look at and understand and it's kind of neat to measure some stuff and get a good understanding of it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull up here what the fcc has as their guidelines Okay, so this is one of the many documents FCC has. 
and this is um, evaluating the compliance. So this is how um, you know they would evaluate something like this or a cell phone to make sure it actually complies with the regulations. The FCC is a regulate. The FCC is a regulating body, but honestly, they don't really um, uh, define the specifications. They kind of adopt the specifications from some of the uh, public um, organizations, the IEEE. Um, I forget what the other one is, but um, they kind of get those from other experts and then um, are kind of sold on the idea to adopt these. And like I said, there's some controversy around it. This is many pages. Let me just get to um, kind of the end here, which is the important stuff for a table as far as what the appendix says is the good uh, or possible limits to have. So there are a couple different criteria because it's government stuff. That one is occupational limit, one is general population or uncontrolled exposure. My interpretation is I would use the second one to be the limits for general population uncontrolled. These limits are lower than, occupa uh, than the occupational ones. Um, and what this shows you here is on the left side you have your frequency range and that's the frequency of the signal. I understand this is a little bit uh, complicated but most of the cellular stuff we're going to be looking at it starts as low as about 600 megahertz um, which is at MHZ and then it goes up to for like Verizon C band you're still in this sub 6 gigahertz band so that would be the um, 6000 megahertz so for us we're in those last two rows there between you know uh, the 300 to 1500 and then the 1500 to the 1000 and what you can see here is they do an averaging time of 30 seconds or sorry 30 minutes for that exposure so if you have a uh, short burst you know like I did a speed test and I stopped um, it would be this average over 30 minutes so that is another thing to kind of consider it's not just what the little peak is so that is how they define those requirements this graph here kind of um, shows the same data it's just in a graph uh, format where you can see that it is frequency dependent because uh, your body is susceptible and you have different um, uh, kind of side effects at different frequencies and know that this is called non-ionizing radiation um, it's not radiation like you get with an x-ray um, that's you, know, you see people have to wear like the lead vest and stuff and because that can actually do a lot more damage than non-ionizing radiation so it's not like um, it's super scary and, and very bad. It's more of like what are the long-term implications uh, of the exposure, and that's what um, this is trying to limit uh, that for. So um, they do, again, have these limits. This is kind of what I'm going to use. This device um, also beeps at, you know, and they have their um, low, medium, or high um, classification that they have in there as well. But I'm going to um, kind of compare to these FCC guidelines and just see where we're at with these devices. All right, so here we are. Oh man, this is way higher than I thought it was gonna be. 3462, geez, 50. So I obviously have five 5G modems right here and they're all working on an internal antenna and you can see this is really high. This is kind of crazy. Now, obviously, it's five of them, but I'm not that close. I'm not touching them. If I were to touch them, man, 74, 97, 100. Sorry, got to try to have you guys see this number here. All right, so that's certainly high. Um, that is pretty surprising. I did not expect that high of a number. Now this is in the um, milliwatts per centimeter squared, which is a power density for the RF or radio frequency here. But you can see here, even if I'm five feet away, um, and you know, I don't know how much data is going through there. Not a whole lot of data is currently going through all of these guys, but I'm pretty regular at five um you know milliwatts per centimeter squared so over a 30 minute time window i would not be surprised if this is categorized in the high area and this is you know wherever i am i'm probably five 
feet away from them. So now what I want to do is unplug all of them or turn them off. I'm going to have just the T-Mobile one on and I'm going to switch it from the internal antenna to the external antenna and just see what kind of delta that makes. Now just to give you some perspective up there is where I just was. This is the exact same. I, all, all I did was come down here. You can see my numbers are um, way lower even if I go um, underneath where I was at. So um, certainly <laughs> on being on a different floor, one floor down, um, it, it all goes away. So it's really about being close to it is where you're going to see the problem. All right, so here we are in a office and we can see we're at normal levels here. And then I am going to start another uh, speed test on my phone with my Wi-Fi. Now I have a Wi-Fi access point X on the side of this um, printer. You can see it, it is starting to go up and now if I get closer to it, keep getting closer at 5, 21, 18, 97, 98. If I touch it, I get about 9, 97, 98, same as before. I'm about 11, you know, a couple, if I go to six feet away, kind of where I was, with the um, the 5G modems up there, it was are now about two, one, one and a half. So, um, you know, if I get up to a Wi-Fi access point, I can easily get uh, just as high, you know, 102 um, type numbers um, on there. All right, so we are back in here, and now I have just the G4AR, the white T-Mobile um, gateway on. It's on the internal antenna. The other 5G modems are all off. And you can see here I'm around 1.7 to 2 um, milliwatts per centimeter squared here. And we're going to go over closer to the unit and just see what we got. We got about... Three, six, if I get right onto the top of it, it says 96, 90, 87. So certainly can get high here. All right, so I got 103, 104 on the screen here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and change my antenna. So staying right around 104, 102. I'm gonna go to external antenna and it says success. So drop from 102 to about 60. So that's a 40% uh, percent drop, but it didn't go to zero. Now let's back up and just see if it does make a difference five feet away. So now we're about 1.3. One seven. Now I am sending data through this. It's not uh, like um, calm necessarily. I got um, some videos playing, but 1.2, 1 1.3 seems to be about what it is right now. So I can look at the data a little bit further, but certainly switching it from internal antenna to external did have a noticeable effect. And just note, I do have Wi-Fi off on the gateway itself. There is no Wi-Fi. Um, active on it. Alright, so that was actually pretty educational. I learned a lot by reading up on some of the stuff and then doing the testing. I do think this little um, EMF 390 is a pretty cool device. I have a link down in the video description on Amazon or buying it direct from them as well. And it tests all kinds of things, not just um, 5G, but like showed the Wi Fi, microwave, all as well as uh, EMF um, and other uh, signals that are in your house as well. So a pretty cool tool what i did learn for sure is i don't want to live or sleep up in that third floor loft where i have all five of those gateways i already kind of knew that and it's actually one of my drivers for putting it up there is uh at most uh the kids will go up there every once in a while to play uh for 10 or 15 minutes uh, before they get uh, bored and then they come back down so it's a good place to put them up there i would not want to have that uh, right beside my nightstand, uh, meaning one of these gateways right beside my nightstand uh, because the data here shows that I am actually over the recommended limit um, 
up there, especially when I have multiple ones of those on and they're using the internal antennas in them uh, with Wi-Fi on and everything. So, um, you know, roughly about 1 to 1 1.6 of this um, milliwatts per centimeter squared is the FCC recommendation. And if you ask some people, they say that is actually already too high of a number and that, that you should have lower. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, I haven't really seen any massive data that's truly concerning, but perhaps people are uh, intentionally not studying it on purpose. So um, what I learned here is I'm already over that FCC limit up there with all those devices on there from according to what this says, even if I'm five or six feet away, and absolutely if you're right up um, close to it. So uh, I forget the guidelines if it was like one and a half feet or three feet that they kind of tell you to be away from uh, this type of device. Um, but that's good advice and even better if you can be further away, 10 feet. Um, as I showed, if I was actually on uh, a floor just below the um, the gateway up in the loft, um, I was perfectly clean, no issues with the, the levels. And again, down here, if I were just to turn this on and show you uh, when I have no um, you know testing that I'm doing, uh, the computer can be on Wi-Fi and doing stuff, but so like right now I am at point. It's actually showing zero, but um, point two um, of this uh, milliwatts per centimeter squared. Um, so a much lower number there. So this is considered uh, safe um, in here, which is what you ideally want to be. But I wouldn't know that unless I tested it. So hopefully this was a instructional video, helped you learn a little bit about. Uh, that stuff as well and uh, again if you like the video give me that thumbs up and subscribe thanks